Yes. Hello. Nice. It works. So um, <clears throat> it's a pretty long talk. Basically, I need to rush through. So I take that extra five minutes um, so that we can a little bit longer. Um, so yeah. Hello. My name is uh, Simon Emanuel Schmidt. I work um, at Azure Node as a developer experience manager. And yeah, in this talk, I go through like the next stuff for the graph. Um, so you probably know the graph. And so we start first quickly with, with what is the graph today. So basically, the graph is this. So it, um, it takes, so there is this data on the blockchain, which is just like mixed together transaction over transaction. And it's very hard to, to really find out what's going on. And then kind of with, with some technical magic, in the end, we have like this well-organized and structured data that we can query. Or maybe in another setup, a little bit more technical explained. Um, initially, there were, were the front ends, which are fully decentralized. We can do this on IPFS. And the contracts, again, like fully de decentralized with, uh, with the blockchain. We know that. Um, and, and that was the initial idea how to build dApps, right? But the problem with that is that uh, th these, th these smart contracts are incentivized for data writing, right? So we, pa we pay gas fees to the miners. So the miners include that. The whole security comes because of that. But to extract data, to read data from the blockchain, we have a JSON RPC interface, which was never built to actually extract data in, in bulk. It is built for like small interactions. How, how can I interact with my local node, actually? Initially, that was the idea. So that's where actually the graph comes into play. It's like it's this, it's this thing that sits between the front end or your data consum consume consumption and the blockchain and, and creates this, this nice indexing um, layer that you can query. So the graph is basically the data layer for Web3. So it sits in between there. Um, another way to de describe what's going on here is like uh, if, if you just use the JSON RPC and you want to do a simple stuff like uh, displaying all tokens that is one wallet holds, then you end up with, with code like this. And that can take up to 10 seconds to resolve. Like it's always waiting, waiting, waiting. So with the graph, we can have like this beautiful GraphQL query, which like boom in one request gives you all the tokens of user. And we are also able to kind of infl influence how this query looks like. So that's great stuff. But the graph is not only kind of this technology, it's also this decentralized network as of yesterday or so when I last updated these numbers, there are 465 indexers, 725 subgraphs on the decentralized network deployed. If you want to deploy your subgraph on the decentralized network, find us, find me, we have a booth, we help doing this. And since the network launched, um, there were like 2.25 million GRTs in query fees generated. So on the network, like consumers pay for query fees and uh, that, that was, was um, generated so far. So we have truly decentralized apps with a decentralized data layer. Like there are a lot of teams that already migrated, like Premia, Yearn, uh, Artblocks, Pull Together, NFTX, and so on and so forth. Like um, it's, it's really the big, big initiative now to migrate everything over to the decentralized network. But not only that, the graph uh, contract just scaled on, on Arbitrum. Like the whole contract, they lived on Ethereum mainnet, and, and now like there is also like a, another instance on, on Arbitrum. So like all the stuff that you do on the, with these contracts, like publish a subgraph, curate on a subgraph, become an indexer, allocate, and, and, and stuff is like uh, 20x less or 26x less gas fees. Um, like it was now just deployed, it's possible. Uh, the next steps will be to have indexing rewards on, on Arbitrum one, and then like there will be a one-click, super easy migration path. So um, this is this is great. Also, last week um, the, 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 we announced like the addition of additional chains on the decentralized network. So far, it was Ethereum mainnet and Gnosis chain. Now it's also like Arbitrum, Salo, and Avalanche uh, enabled on the decentralized network. So very very fast forward. Also, Base launched last week the Coinbase L2. So like the Coinbase like the base girly testnet can already be used in the subgraph studio and if you're hacking on that weekend i uh, urge you to do that because there are joint bounties between coinbase and the the graph that you can can get but so far that's for now the question is what's next right so the graph is a decentralized uh, 
the, the development protocol. Um, there are these this working groups. It's data and APIs, index or experience, protocol networks and operations. There is a SNARK force and there are protocol economics. So very interesting topics that are going on. Like a lot of that stuff is publicly on the forum, so you're going to uh, forum.thegraph.com, but I will run through quickly through the highlights um, for your convenience. There are six core dev teams working on the graph. Um, it is Edge Node, the company that I work for, writing the smart contracts, writing the graph node, and other um, infrastructure uh, stuff. Then there is streaming fast, they, they create substreams and, uh, and firehose. We will dive into this quickly later on. Uh, GraphOps, they work on uh, indexer tooling. We also see that quickly. Then Semiotic are this AI research and uh, SNARK f folks that are very smart in that. We go, we go quickly into it. The Guild, like superheroes, open source, um, GraphQL, the people that write the best tooling. Uh, all, also in Web2, quite well-known group. Also joined as a core dev and then Last but not least, Messari with their standardized subgraphs. You will go into that. So in the end, there are these three pillars of success uh, that the graph collectively, the, the core devs collectively work towards. It's like the quality of service. Like if you want to query a subgraph, you should have like a fast and snappy experience. The cost of service, it should be a, like reasonably priced and affordable. And the developer experience also like it should just be a snap and easy. So this is the stuff that we focus on and that will improve over time. Already improved a lot. The, the network launched uh, one and a half year ago, and uh, in, the in the beginning there were like some rough edges, and they are uh, they are smoothing out and smoothed out on a continuous basis. Substreams. <coughs> this is one of the big th topics that uh, that was always bouncing around. It's like the the big claim is like, hey, with substreams you can have like up to hundred x indexing speed improvements. So that li that sounds like a big number. So what is behind that hundred x? Let's quickly go into it. You can think about the subgraph as an ETLQ pipeline. Extract, transform, load, and then query in the end, right? Extraction works through JSON RPC. Transform is with the WebAssembly that you write in the subgraph. Then you store the, then you store the whole thing in a, in a Postgres database. And in the end, we can query it with GraphQL. That's how a subgraph works today. It is OK, but it is like serial processing. There, is, it, there are some bottlenecks. It can be slow. It can be huge. There, there are a lot of problems. Now, the streaming fast rematching the whole thing like from the beginning and started with like the extract. So in, in, like, the JSON RPC interface is not like the best one to really get data out quickly, and especially not in bulk. So they, they came up with this idea of Firehose, which is basically writing raw block data, flat files, just out as quick as possible. So you can easily then start to, to use, um, to parallelize that and, st and stream that wherever you want, right? And then we have these flat files, raw blocks, streaming out as fast as possible. And then they will be transformed. So in the end, what we need is we want to we we know which is the token price, how that developed, where is the NFT. So that's where the substreams come in. So substreams are like a map reduce, parallelizable technology that consumes raw block data and in the end ends up with like a refined stream of data. Uh, that you then later we can load it and query it. So the Firehose substream only goes for, for the E and T in the ETLQ pipeline. Uh, yeah, quick comparison. So how does it look like? With substreams, we have these models, modu modules, and uh, they can be co composed together. So first we get out the pairs and the, the pools, and we have prices, V1, V2. And you know, it, it could be different authors also that, that write this, and then in the end, like several substreams can be combined into one if you just want to have like a price feed, for example. So um, that, that's what, you, what we can do with, with substreams. Then this could also be then enhanced with another module that another person writes, let's say, about uh, sales on OpenSea or any other platform, and then again combined into like something like USDC volume uh, over, over the NFT. Things. So that's the, the, the beauty is really this, this modularization and composability of modules that in the end also can be like a parallel ex uh, executed, right? So we can have like 10,000 blocks at a time and then boom, uh, parallelize this across different machines, squash together and really move uh, fast forward. Also, the developer experience is quite good, so definitely something to check out. This thing is live as a developer preview, like there is documentation of, uh, on the 
on the Streaming Fast website. And uh, in the, the next step will be like to really in, in include this new technology into the graph decentralized network. Uh, very exciting stuff. Cool. I quickly touched on Messari already. So Messari also joined as a core dev team to the graph, and their, their mission is to create high-quality subgraphs across uh, the, the industry and the different uh, verticals. So it starts like, OK, if you want to start to compare uh, lending protocols, uh, then we can have these different um, metrics like TVL, revenue, deposits, and so on and so forth. And then we have these different lending protocols. They, they, they can be categorized in lending protocols. Um, but obviously, all of them work a little bit different. So then maybe we can find a data source A that tracks all the TVL across all these lending protocols. But they do not go into revenue and deposits and stuff. But we want to have all of it, right? So then we find a data source B. And there we, we find a little bit more. There is also some revenue and deposits, but it's not complete, right? It's a problem. If you really want to look at the whole lending space in general, uh, that doesn't, that's not enough. We find maybe even a data source C that has a little bit more. And then we combine everything. We, we get a little bit near where we want, but the problem is we, st we still have gaps. And like sometimes we have several data sources for the same thing. And sometimes these, these data sources, interestingly, are even um, conflicting. So they say like different stuff because it's, it's uh, different uh, uh, ways of extracting the metrics. So that's exactly what Messari ma ma makes. They write subgraphs on the graph, open source that everybody can query uh, as a public good and that have like the exact same schema across all these um, DeFi uh, uh, protocols in the same um, verticals. So there is a DeFi vertical, there's a lending vertical, ver uh, AMM lending, um, also a lot of uh, DAO stuff, governance is, is one of the categories. There's a lot of stuff that uh, is worth looking up. So this, this powers their new thing called the data apps. That's something that, that you find there. It's in a closed beta right now. But also, um, yeah, then you, you see dashboards like this, all powered by the, by the graph, NFT Explorer, uh, a pretty, pretty nice uh, uh, data science stuff built on top. So again, they work similar to the apps that we have like a, a UI on top, they query the graph, and the graph has indexed data from the blockchain. Also, they have these um, protocol metrics that you find on their website if you go on the top left on data. Um, and then, you, then we can see uh, all these different protocols, uh, how they did the metrics that we want to inspect. So that's, that's a very cool thing, all powered by the graph. And the cool thing is when you look at these, these dashboards and you think, ah, I want to do actually something a little bit different, or I want to go maybe a little bit more into this or that, it's, it's built on open source, it's built on subgraphs. Um, we can just build whatever we want on top of it. Another core dev is the guild. As I said before, for those people that know GraphQL and Web 2s, they are very big there, like schema stitching, GraphQL yoga server, GraphQL playground, all these nice toolings that are making our lives as developer much easier is basically built by um, the guild. Also, the guild joined as a core dev team the Graph ecosystem, and they are now build, uh, working on different stuff like GraphQL improvements, uh, so recently, they just shipped this and or filters was, was very often requested, um, but also the graph client, uh, which I show you quickly. So a simple setup looks like we have a front, like the, the data stream goes actually bottom up, right? So we have blockchain data, it's indexed by the graph, and then sent to the graph client and will be uh, then displayed in a front end. Um, one uh, feature that is requested quite often is like subscriptions. People say like when subscriptions. And the guild works on the subscriptions and the way it will be implemented is with live queries. And we can already use that uh, live queries feature to today just in a client and later, later on like this feature will be then introduced uh, into the graph uh, node and the decentralized network. But not only that, the graph client helps us to combine multiple subgraphs across multiple chains into one unified GraphQL interface on top. So a lot of protocols, you know, like nowadays, 
tip top to, uh, they deploy to mainnet, then they deploy to Arbitrum, they deploy to Optimism, then they deploy to base, base at some point, and so on and so forth. Like this multi chain thing is here. Usually it's the same contracts, the same subgraph, just on different chains, right? Now the graph client helps to then just have like one unified graphical interface across all these subgraphs. Um, and that's very powerful. Also, something with the graph client. Also, the graph client could be used directly uh, to interact with the, with the blockchain and also writing mutations. And with, with, when, when we have like a, a dab with the graph and also write the mutations into the graph client, uh, then we have like a super powerful real data layer where we can also write the mutations in the code. The graph client helps send some stuff to the blockchain if you write. Then it goes to the graph and it's displayed. Um, helps with block tracking that we always on top. So if you're a data consumer or a front-end developer, you should definitely check out the graph client. Graph, graph ops, they work on two, smart, two cool stuff like graph cast. It's a way for indexers to communicate in a gossip network with each other to uh, inform themselves like each other about like, hey, what data did you see? Or um, what's the la latest stuff? Uh, very cool. And also the launch pad, which is a Kubernetes um, configuration to quickly launch an indexer on the, on the decentralized network. So very cool stuff. Graphcast, for, for those of you know, builds on top of Waku. I know the image is not the best, but the idea is like <laughs> there is this Waku gossip network that's um, built somewhere in the Ethereum uh, ecosystem also. And then Graphcast just leveraged that and builds on top. So very cool stuff here. Cool. So nowadays, also th there is these buzzwords, right, about AI. Uh, we've, we saw recently with ChatGPT um, that AI is a big, big thing, and everybody starts to believe in it. Um, Semiotic Labs is actually one of the pioneers, um, or like a, a research company focusing on on uh, artificial intelligence, cryptography, and general software engineering. Also, they joined the graph as a core dev recently. And um, we can quickly look into what they are um, working on. So one of the big problems in general when we look at data pipelines is like, can we trust the data? Is, is the data somewhere maybe, like was there somewhere a hiccup that gave wrong data or is even uh, some malicious actors uh, in place? And the solution obvious, like obviously is probably goes in the direction, yeah, I mean, we can use cryptography, we can maybe do something with a, with a CK proofs to really know what's going on. So it's the, the whole topic is verified computing. And um, Semiotic has, has a big focus on it and, and does, does this uh, verifying computing research. So the idea is that a, a lot of uh, cal calculation is done off-chain that gives, that gives the confidence and then in the end the, just the proof is uh, added on-chain sh should be uh, in a very efficient way so that we don't waste that much of gas. Um, yeah, but to be honest, I'm not like the, a CK researcher. Um, it's just a little bit of hearsay. I also uh, copied together the slides from these core devs when they pre present. Um, but I think it makes sense of the quick overview. So, th so in terms of verifiable computing, there are actually um, four projects or research direction that are going on. So verifiable payments, this, this goes into the direction of uh, scalar payments or uh, state channels. So you can think about when, you, when a query goes to the decentralized network, it goes to one of the, of the gateways, and then the gateways also keep, keep track of the payments and then request it from the indexer. The, when, the, when the gateway requests the query and got the query, the indexer receives a ticket in order to be able to um, get, get its query fee, right? Now, when we have like on the, on the hosted service, you currently see one billion queries per day. So that's quite a lot of tickets that, that needs to be uh, verified efficiently. So that's where these verifiable payments uh, that's, that's currently um, in progress together with Edge Node, and there were, was good progress there. I think tomorrow one of the streaming uh, semiotic researchers will have a talk that goes deeper into this. Then also verifiable indexing is, is another one. So we, we, need, we need to make sure also that the data that we see or the data that indexes see, that, that, we, that we are sure that it's the correct data. Um, on JSON RPC, sometimes uh, there could be uh, missing events or something like that. But when we look at 
possibilities with fire hose and the full block with Merkle, Merkle roots, then we can really build up this, this trusted chain of, of data. So that's where verifiable indexing comes in. Verifiable queries, it's probably then like the, the end boss is like when we send the query to the decentralized network, the response should come with a small um, uh, rec receipt or attestation. And just by having these two, we can efficiently in the front end prove that the data is correct. Um, so we see that's the next one. Then there's also SNARK research. Um, in general, uh, I think they're working on papers uh, that, that can be soon be pu published. So that's also, it's a funny one. Uh, that's actually for, for the payment channels. Started with recursive, recursive SNARKs, and they went up to quarks, looked at Plonk, but in the end ended up with these homomorphic signatures, something that already existed, but was a little bit out of sight. And um, yeah, that was from the talk from, um, from, this, from these researchers at DEFCON 6. You can watch that online. Um, yeah, but also AI. So, the, um, so they work on this thing about like in the, in the graph network, it's quite a complex network. So you have different indexes, you have also consumers. Um, and all of these, they kind of want to make the best decisions and they should also be automated. So Semiotic worked on, oops, sorry, uh, uh, some, some, some AI models to, to, make it, to make the system more efficient. For example, like that indexes can better actually find the best price per query in order to like uh, putting into consideration like how much uh, is, uh, is it actually uh, the, the cost for running a machine and what do the in other indexers can have a price for a similar query and so on. So that's a very interesting topic there that they go into. So in a nutshell, um, th that was a very quick rundown. I, I know um, I'm ha more than happy to share the, the slides. Um, I hope we can attach it to the video. I will check that this works. So we can go later, but also like all these different core devs have, some of them have their own talks. I really uh, recommend to check them out. Um, so we have this, uh, as a summary, we have like net, multi-chain network support with, uh, with Arbitrum, Celo, Avalanche, um, Gnosis Chain, and Ethereum mainnet, the Firehose and substreams that make that faster, the Graph Client, Graphcast, Indexer Launchpad, Mesari subgraphs, Scalar Payments, Auto Agora, and Verifiable Queries. So in the end, it makes, Harder, better, faster, stronger, like harder trust guarantees, better developer experience, faster query processing, stronger uptime guarantees. Um, that's where we're going through. That's where we're headed. Thank you so much for your attention. Have fun. <laughs> Happy hacking. <laughs>